So today's video, I just wanted to show you guys how you can use the uh, the twenty thirty dollar RTL SDR as a both HF receiver and to decode uh, digital modes as well. This is kind of an introduction to the series uh, that I'm going to do with this, but we're going to start off by using the RTL SDR to decode FT8 which is a ham radio digital mode that allows uh, far, far contacts with very much noise. So using this device uh, and an antenna, you can uh, receive satellite, or not satellite, but uh, HF signals uh, from quite, quite far away, just depending on the type of day. So what you're gonna need to get started here is obviously you're gonna need a RTL SDR, which is what I'm using here. And you're also going to need a antenna. So, uh, the antenna that typically comes with these is not going to work. It's, uh, it's just too small for the HF bands. You're going to need something much larger. And when it comes to HF, you don't really need an elaborate antenna. It can just be a wire. It could be a long, long wire. It could be a gutter. It could be a fence. You just need to connect something long and metal to this thing, literally. And, you know, you'll get better results if you have something proper. But for the HF, you just need something big and metal. So in my case, I am going to use my HF antenna that I have outside, and I have an adapter here connected to my feed line, which screws right into the RTL SDR. Now that there is a one uh, software modification that you're going to need um, before you get started. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the computer, and I'll show you guys what you need software-wise, and uh, let's, let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so on the computer side of things, uh, there's a few pieces of software that we're going to need to get started. So, and I'm going to explain what these do. So basically, the first one you're going to need is uh, what you see on the screen here, the virtual uh, audio cable, VB uh, cable. This software is free to use, and what it does is it um, pretty much emulates a microphone input to your computer that other software can put sound out to. So what we're going to use this for is we're going to take audio that comes from SDR Sharp, and we're going to funnel it into microphone input that's going to be using our FT8 decoding software. So uh, it pretty much just takes audio and puts it into a, a microphone input on your computer. The next thing that we're going to need, obviously, is SDR Sharp. Uh, and I've already created a video on how to get all that set up. And if you're watching this video, you should know what SDR Sharp is because it's the software that comes with RTL SDR. But I will provide a link down below just in case you don't have that to download it. Make sure you get it downloaded. The next thing that we're going to need is a uh, WSJT-X. So this program, if you're not familiar with it, is the the main software for decoding FT8. Uh, it's actually the software that the creators of FT8 uh, created. So we'll be using that to decode and see our uh, FT8 signals in the air. The last but not least, you're going to need to download a uh, modified RTL SDR.DLL that goes into your SDR Sharp folder. And what this DLL does is it replaces the one that you have now and will allow you to get onto the HF bands with the RTL SDR because with the native uh, uh, DLL you are not able to do that. So just quick uh, show you this uh, show you quickly on what that looks like. Uh, once you download the RTL SDR uh, DLL file, it's going to pop up in your downloads, and you're going to take it and you're going to drop it into your uh, SDR Sharp folder. And it's going to be named this when you download it. You're going to have to rename the one that you already have. So rename the RTL SDR. And we'll call this uh, Backup. And then we're going to rename the, uh, the file we downloaded to RTL SDR.dll. So that right there completes the software modification that you need to do on SDR Sharp to get it running. So now, well, all we really need to do after you've installed the virtual audio cable in SDR Sharp and our uh, DLL is, and you don't really have to install the FT8 software just yet, but you will need it here in a minute, moment. We can go ahead and open up SDR Sharp. If you don't know how to use SDR Sharp, make sure you check out my All You Need to Know About RTL SDR video, and I go over all of those things. So let's go ahead and open up SDR Sharp. And you're going to come up to a screen just like this. I don't have my dongle plugged in right now, so I'm actually going to go ahead and plug that in. All right, my dongle is now plugged in. And before you hit the play button, the way that this um, this HF mod works is there has to be certain settings here.
right? So you want to make sure that your sampling rate, uh, 2.4 is a good one. Uh, the next thing you want to make sure is that your direct sampling is on the Q branch. And then just go ahead and hit that play button. Uh, you also want to make all. Uh, you also want to make sure that the RTL AGR uh, or AGC automatic gain control is on. This is actually what enables the mod to work. So once you do that, uh, as long as you have an appropriate antenna hooked up to um, your RTL SDR, you should start seeing some uh, signal coming in on the lower bands. So the main F8 protocol um, or frequency. For different bands, uh, it's generally about the same, but in this video example, I'm going to show you the one on the 40 meter band, which is at 7.074 megahertz. So go ahead and make sure you get there. And I actually have the audio routed into my um, uh, virtual audio cable right now, so I'll go ahead and play it just so you guys can hear what it's supposed to sound like. So that's what, well, actually you need to make sure that you're, um, you're on the upper sideband. That's important, okay? So make sure you have upper sideband checked here. And there's different bandwidth settings you can play around with. I think you can go up to about 5,000 and be fine, but you can also keep it to around 2,500. So if you can't hear, just to be sure, I'm going to turn up the volume. That's what you should be hearing for FT8. It's like a, uh, so almost like a screaming sound with different pitches. So now that you have that, I'm going to put my volume at about 50%, okay? And uh, we're going to go ahead and stop it. And here, uh, we're going to change our output for sound to our virtual audio cable. Uh, so that's going to be cable input. And when we hit play, what's happening here is the sound that would normally play through the speakers for the RTL SDR is being piped into this virtual audio cable. And if you want to see what that looks like, you can open up your sounds um, and go to your recording. And um, Okay, there we go. So for your audio cable, you want to make sure your volume's up enough to where you can see sounds actually occurring here. So it's uh, this is a microphone input, a virtual microphone input. So you want to make sure that there are sounds there, and we can adjust the volume later if it doesn't work right. So the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and open up the uh, WSJT-X-Ray software. And this, uh, the software is going to go ahead and, um, what you download from this page right here, by the way, uh, most, most of you will all are probably Windows users, so just make sure you use this download link here. And once it's installed, uh, we'll go ahead and open it up. And you're going to see a few things once it's opened up here. So this right here is your waterfall, right? So this uh, kind of is like resembles different frequencies of sound as it goes up. And this is how bandwidth is distributed on this digital mode. So on the right here, or on the left, you can see that this is red. That means uh, probably the volume's too high. So we can go into SDR Sharp here and just bring it down some, and uh, you'll see that those uh, that turn a more greenish color there. So the next thing uh, you're going to do is make sure you um, go into File and Settings, and you want to go into Audio, and make sure that your input is set to uh, your cable output. Okay? So if you don't do this, then the program doesn't know where to look for the audio for uh, to analyze the FT8 signals coming in. So once you do that, you should start seeing a list populate over here. And this is um, actually signals coming in from the RTL SDR, and they're being decoded uh, in the program, and this is the result. Uh, what you're seeing here is CQ. Uh, the station's calling somebody to answer them. This is their call sign. This is their country, and this is their grid coordinate, uh, Echo Mary 66. Now, we can also um, open up a program called Grid Tracker, which I'll put the download link to, uh, but it's not really necessary. And we can actually see um, visually where these stations are coming from. 
On my screen, the yellow indicates stations that have worked just because the software stores it. But as more CQs pop up here, you're going to see uh, different stations pop up in blue, which is uh, stations that we have decoded in the session. So you'll see one pop up here, or there's one here, and there's one here. And each block of decoding, it's just going to pop up a few more stations as they come in. But this is pretty much the, the gist of it all. This right here is sound that is coming in, or it signals coming in from uh, the HF bands into your RTL-SDR, and they are being decoded um, in the, uh, the, the Whiskey Sierra uh, Juliet Tango X-Ray software. So that is how you decode FT8 signals on your RTL-SDR. And uh, I said this is going to be part of like a, a mini-series, but we're going to be uh, uh, decoding this software, and we're also going to be decoding PSK31. So just make sure you guys uh, subscribe, rate, and comment. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff for the RTL-SDR in the future.